नमस्ते बिटिया हमेशा खुश रहो बिटिया मैं सेल्फ जेवियन डॉक्टर आस्था सिकरवार असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ऑर्गन ऑफ मेडिसिन फैकल्टी ऑफ होम्योपैथिक साइंस ज्योति विद्यापीठ वोमेंस यूनिवर्सिटी जयपुर टूडेज टॉपिक इज फ्रॉम जेटिक एंड फिलोसफी द एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ द पेशेंट कंटिन्यूड नंबर वन The examination must be continued with due respect to the nature of the sickness and with due respect to the nature of the materia medica. It makes no difference as far as cure is concerned. It matters not whether they are not present in the case or whether the doctor has not found them. The key to the prescription is not present, but if the image is round and full and complete, there are symptoms with regard to pathology, diagnosis. prognosis and materia medica it will be proper later to talk of incurable disease pathognomonic symptoms obscure cases materia medica symptoms etc when the physician comes to look over the record after an examination to get the image to classify and arrange it he will find what is peculiar and those symptoms that are most general and those that are but common these three grades appear in every complete case and in every complete proving of a remedy homeopathic study and observation will enable one to pick out these grades at a glance every case has common symptoms but peculiar symptoms may be absent and you must not expect to cure when peculiar symptoms are absent homeopathy is kept applicable in every curable case but the great thing is to know how to apply it the physician must sit in judgment upon the symptoms and determine whether they are peculiar or common if the patient's discourse is incoherent the question arises is he intoxicated or delirious or is there breaking down of the brain and insanity a physician is supposed to set his mind to work instantly to ascertain the condition of the patient and what relation the symptoms maintain to the materia medica there is no symptom in the sick room without its value especially in acute and serious cases the physician now must examine every side of the case to find the nature to know what to expect he who neglects this is not a true homeopathic physician a mere superficial application of homeopathy is not sufficient after all the symptoms are written out the physician must study the character of the fever whether it is intermittent continued or has come on in one sudden attack he must know sufficient of the symptoms to judge of all these you will learn so much about the purport and the aspect of every motion of the human being that you will place less and less reliance on diagnostic symptoms as diagnostic symptoms and learn more the value of symptoms as symptoms it is important to know instantly what the cause is for the treatment will be different but remember that it is nothing that you need to name that makes it important all these symptoms have respect to remedy and to diagnostic conditions so far as there is a morbid anatomy which can account for symptom so much less are those symptoms worth as indicating a remedy if you had no other than such symptoms you could find no remedy among the many things that interfere with the examination of the patient the most important is the taking of medicines or having done something no matter what it is that has been capable of changing the symptoms very commonly the patient will present himself in the doctor's office and after giving a long array of symptoms will relate that last night he took a dose of calomel or two days ago he took a dose of quinine and he thinks he is no better and now he applies to you for relief in acute disease this is very bad and my interfere with finding the homeopathic remedy very often the general state collectively both drug and disease symptoms in very acute condition must be prescribed for but in chronic disease the plan is different the symptom that arise after taking of a dose of powerful medicine are no indicative of a remedy they are confusing they present no true image of the disease and hence the physician nothing to do but wait or at most administer a well known antidote to the drug taken 
sometimes he must wait a considerable time until the symptoms reveal themselves and express the nature of the sickness it is just as bad where the physician himself is a bungler as it is where the patient has taken the drugs the confusion arising from bad prescribing is just the same as that produced by the patient's drugging there are physicians going about who will mix up their cases and continue to prescribe for their own drug symptoms and who never have any idea of waiting for the true image of the disease to develop itself drugging is only a matter of changing symptoms and masking the case anything that will affect a change in the symptom the taking of drugs or drinking too much wine or drinking toddy or great exposure will mask the case and this mask must wear away before the intelligent physician can make a cure the whole aim of the physician is to secure the language of nature any meddling will so affect the aspect of the case that the physician cannot prescribe and the physician who does this meddling must invitably be driven into bad methods or into allopathy it is true that once in a while a strong vigorous robust patient when he gets a homeopathic remedy will go on getting well through a mass of symptom changing and drugging so that in spite of this meddlesome sorry meddlesome practice he will recover the physician in that case knows not what remedy to attribute it to for he has given a great many but only the most vigorous constitution will stand such homeopathic will any some vigorous patients after getting the homeopathic remedy go on and get well in spite of their indulgence in wine in eating etc it is wonderful what their own powers will do in throwing off disease in ordinary cases however we see so much things confusion is brought about at once if the physician administer another medicine in place of administering placebo in such a case wait a while and then order will begin to come and that remedy which was indicated previous to the drugging will act examine the image of the case where the order was lost because that is where the image must be found on the contrary the symptoms and the inconveniences which exhibited themselves previous to the use of the medicines or several days after their discontinuance give the true fundamental notion of the original form of the malady this is the idea get the original form of the malady to do this at times we have to trace through a mass of difficulties and conditions to get back to the original form of the trouble but you must get there because you will see that in the beginning this malady the in accordance with all law of divine providence must have conformed to some remedy that had been created for its cure the symptoms at that time stood out indicating this medicine but since then there has been nothing but confusion nothing that can be tied to nothing that can be examined it appears to have no relation to anything very often we can take up the thread and get back to the remedy that was clearly indicated even 20 years before if that remedy was indicated then and was not given the cure that was possible by that remedy or a similar one is the only thing to be considered that is the only remedy in the case since that time the patient has been in continual turmoil from the action of drugs because it was 20 years ago there is no reason that you should not think of that drug the patient's disease has not been cured it has only been changed and modified but it is the same patient and the same sickness and requires the same medicine if the disease has been complicated with drugs however you cannot always get the action of that medicine which the patient needs for the disease per se but after the drugs has been antidoted you will have to give that very medicine that you figured out and he will be cured it is necessary also the sorry it is necessary also to observe the changes all along the line of progress to know the disease at its beginning its earlier manifestation its later symptoms and its ending and as sure as you live you if you practice faithfully carefully understanding your case 
at great length gathering in everything there was in the beginning your cures will be so striking that the multitude will come to you to be healed you cannot place too much importance upon the masking of the patient's symptoms by medicines by proper repetition and by dosing carelessly paragraph 94 one inquiring into a state of chronic disease it is required to weigh the particular circumstance in which the patient may be placed in regard to ordinary occupation mode of life and domestic situation etc all of the activities of the life are circumstantial that is they are not activities they are not governed by circumstance there is no business that is not governed by circumstance the circumstances of a man's life govern his actions and reactions the symptoms and the development of symptoms the body is associated with circumstances every function is related to circumstances and we may say all the natural functions of life are concerned are connected with circumstances without these we would have nothing to prescribe upon we would have nothing to a certain images by we would have nothing to form the symptoms hence the circumstances of life and habit must be studied with a view to going into the slightest particulars things that cannot be removed will develop sora in a peculiar direction all these circumstances ought to be examined to discover if there is anything that could give birth to and keep up the disease so that by its removal the cure may be facilitated this session powered by digital version 2.0 jyoti vidya pit women's university i hope you are satisfied with my digital session if you have any query please mention it in comment box i will resolve it thank you